Hi, I'm Bill Babcock with Expert Amateur. So, uh, Will Prowse kind of shocked me recently when he said that um, these little ganged breakers, little DC breakers, made a good solar disconnect for smaller systems. I, I've been telling people for a long time that um, uh, don't use breakers as a switch. Um, but uh, when I started thinking about it, I thought, well, you know, the breakers do have some capabilities built into them that, um, that would make them better than a simple switch because they usually do have arc suppression and, and, um, and some other characteristics, you know, high speed contact opening for most DC breakers open their contacts very quickly, which helps with arc suppression. So I've been watching Will Prowse's videos a long time and uh, I've really never seen him say something that he can't back up. So, um, so I figured he probably dove into the guts of one of these things. So I bought one. I, I also bought a, the kind of DC disconnect switch that I'm using for my panel. And I'm going to take that apart too. Drilled out the rivets and destroyed the breaker to take a look and see. And sure enough, it's got some pretty cool tech in it. So that's what this video is about. As soon as the disconnect gets here, I'll take that apart too and show you what that is, how that works. But um, it's a little long video. I mean, it's not super long, but... It's uh, longer than I in would have intended, um, but uh, I think it's got some good information and it's kind of interesting seeing kind of engineering that was done to make this breaker work the way it does. This is what an AC breaker looks like on the inside. The only thing pushing this breaker closed, uh, or for that matter, opening it, is this little spring. But there's not a tremendous amount of force snapping this apart, so it comes apart fairly quickly, but lackadaisically compared to a DC breaker. We'll show you what the difference looks like. But notice, there's no arc shoot, there's no internal structure to extinguish the arc it's just the distance so the uh, the contacts come apart roughly this far this is the stop for it and um, so that's more than adequate for ac because ac is constantly going through the um, through the zero point in its cycle when it goes to the zero point the arc is momentarily extinguished, has a couple of microseconds to, um, to uh, cool off and for the plasma. The plasma immediately disappears, but the, um, but the ionization, the ionized air, of course, st stays between these. But the resistance is fairly high. So this is more than enough to interrupt the circuit safely. Um, this, would not, this would not work for DC. The uh, the arc would start as the as the break as as the contacts start coming apart relatively slowly compared to a DC breaker. Um, it would draw the arc out and establish the plasma channel, the ionization uh, and the plasma channel, and then it would just persist. If you were running DC at 500 volts and say 11 amps, 10 amps, it would it would it would catch fire. Uh, simple as that. It's, this is not okay for DC. So we'll show you what the difference is. So over here I have um, a DC breaker. And this is a DC breaker that's sold as, as an isolator for um, disconnecting solar panels. It comes in this nice box with um, MC4 connectors already already wired you know I, I like a little bit of headroom i wouldn't use this breaker for more than 300 volt um i haven't opened it up yet but we'll see um you know given the size and the thickness of this i would guess we're going to certainly find an arc chute which is just a series of plates little steel plates that um, break the arc up the arc gets pushed into it either magnetically or by convection current, the arc chute will break the break the arc up into small chunks, and the metal plates will cool it a little bit. Doesn't take a tremendous amount of work to cool to get an arc 
at something like 300 volts uh, to go away. At 1,000 volts, I would be very concerned about this. You'll also notice there's a significant difference in the spring tension. This has obviously got a pretty wicked spring inside of it to uh, snap these, car these contacts apart. And the faster they move apart, the less chance there is for an arc to form. Of course, if you're buying these for your own use, you have absolutely no reason to be taking this apart. Um, this is virtually a little plug-in-place system. You can just, it comes with, um, it comes with supplied MC4 connectors, uh, which is nice because mixing and matching MC4 connectors from different manufacturers is kind of asking for trouble. So I've drilled out the connecting pins that hold these breakers together and hold them. Um, this is definitely in the don't try this at home department. Um, when I'm done with this, these breakers will be unusable. So, um, as you can see, there's a little device in here that's part of ganging these breakers together. It makes certain that both of them, um, it makes certain that both breakers are, they're not just joined by this crossbar, they're joined internally to make certain that they, um, that they both work in concert. And we'll look at the, how that works on the inside. But um, um, you don't want to use a single breaker as a disconnect. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in a breaker, especially one that's where you're kind of at the edge of the specifications. Uh, you can easily weld, get the contacts welded together. Um, that's a common thing. If, the, if, you're, if you close this switch with the, uh, on a load, um, a lot of current flows as the contacts are starting to close and that can weld those contacts together. And so when you try to, when you open the breaker, it may feel like the breaker opened, um, but it may not. Um, so having two of them together, one on negative, one on positive reduces the likelihood of that. Okay. So as you can see, this is a bit more complicated than the AC breaker. The, um, the spring mechanism for this, um, well, to start with, there's, there's a little magnetic coil here. That's part of the tripping mechanism. And, uh, oh yeah, there's a substantial hairspring underneath this, underneath this mechanism here. This looks like part of the contact. This is the other contact, I guess. I'm not seeing very substantial contacts here. I'm, I'm kind of puzzled by this. Here's the piece I want you to see. This is an arc chute. This is what extinguishes that arc. Okay, these metal plates are insulated from each other. The arc gets pushed up into here. We'll take apart the other one and get a little more clarity. Okay, I pulled, I pulled apart the second piece without disturbing any of the parts. And you can see I did get it back together <laughs> properly. So the uh, the contacts are not enormously far apart. Um, it's one of the reasons why I would not be using this too often as a switch. It's obviously relying on the arc extinguishing capabilities of this arc chute to kill the arc rather than a tremendous amount of separation. As you'll see when we take apart the DC disconnect switch, which is still making its way here through the postage, through the post office, um, those rely more on physical separation of the contacts, but they also have arc chutes. And um, I took one apart last year to see what made it tick. And uh, uh, so I kind of know what we're going to see. You can see that the mechanisms inside here will handle a bigger arc because there's arc suppression equipment inside this thing. But this is not something I would want to use over and over again to be disconnecting a little higher voltage or higher current. As Will Prowse says, these breakers will function um, as a DC disconnect for lower amounts of power. There's a fair amount of tech in here. It shows me that whoever, whatever company actually built these um, knows what they're doing. Um, it's not some fake. It's a nice piece of equipment, but don't use it beyond its rating. So there's a couple little mechanisms in here that I didn't notice right away. 
So this looks like a like a bimetal strip so that this breaker trips both magnetically and probably on um, uh, on overheating that strip. So that's um, generally uh, the magnetic trip is happens when you exceed the, the current of the breaker, the current setting. So you hit 51 amps, that trips and the breaker opens. Um, the thermoelectric, the, 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 uh, the bimetallic strip gets warm um, anywhere close to the rating. And if you have a continuous 50 amps, it will, it will probably trip. There's a couple other mechanisms in here. You recall that little thing we saw on the outside that had to go with the, that did with the, that act, acted on the gang switch. And so this is, this is the little nubs that stick in here. And it looks like they act on the latches. So if the, so I suspect if, the, if you try to throw the switches, if you take the cap off and try to throw the switches independently, they will probably just retrip right away. That's my guess. This looks like a magnetic, it could be a permanent magnet down in here. Yeah, right there. So this little cover holds a permanent magnet in place. And you'll notice it's right at the, right about in here. So when the, um, so if an arc forms, the magnet pushes it into the, into the um, arc chute, which makes a lot more sense. So what's that, what that is doing is making the effective contact distance. Let's look at it on this one because this one's more intact. That magnet is making the is pushing the arc into this arc chute. So it's, it's so it would be forming probably a little loop going all the way through the thing to the back of that contact. Um, it lengthens it lengthens the arc. So the arc path is probably more like this down through here along this copper. That's why the copper extends all the way underneath here probably pushes it all the way inside here, inside the arc chute, up through the arc chute and back to this contact. So, so this opening, this, you know, maybe, you know, three eighths of an inch opening or a little more than a quarter inch opening turns into something like um, an inch. Um, so that's pretty interesting. That's pretty clever. So I feel even better about this thing now as a disconnect switch because I think it's got enough arc. I mean, obviously this isn't a lightweight piece of research. They didn't just toss this together. They didn't just say, okay, that's good. This is um, this has got some good engineering in it. So impressive, especially when you contrast it to this. I mean, this works very, very well for what it is. Um, this is uh, this is an AC breaker, and honestly, it's got an easier job. All it has to do is trip. All it has to do is reliably trip. And this is and this is the only mechanism that really matters. Um, this is there's probably a coil in here. This there could also be a thermostatic control, but this is the tripping mechanism that unlatches the breaker, that unlatches this and lets the uh, contacts snap open. So that's the difference.